Welcome to the A to Z of Licensed Games, a series of vids about games that take something from something else. Now to be honest, there's not a lot interesting in you, so today I'm foregoing a honourable mention section and we are in fact starting with the shit room. Cause I've never done much LJN before, aside from the odd game here and there. But if you're looking at licensed games, well, you can't not talk about them at some point. Licensed games were pretty much all that LJN released. And yes, the games were usually quite awful, LJN's reputation is very much deserved. The game I'm predominantly covering in this shit room, The Uncanny X-Men, is a quite phenomenal stinker, and one of the worst games I've ever played in my life. But before tucking into it, let's examine LJN a little, rather than just spewing out compound swear words in the usual nerdazoid fashion. Okay, so the thing about LJN is that they were totally a toy company. A guy named Jack Friedman founded them in 1970, and they produced nothing but toys for close to 15 years. Some other companies, Konami in particular, had a background in toys, but it had never been too long before they started dabbling in electronics, amusements and the like. Well, not so with LJN, they didn't even think about video games until 1985, when the company was bought by MCA. MCA wanted a company to create games based on their products, plus, they just like to buy shit at this point in time. And so, LJN became their branding. And in this time, the LJN name was stuck on games for Universal films like Jaws, Back to the Future, and Gotcha, all three of which are absolute bloody stinkers. They were usually developed by uncredited teams who are slumming it like Rare or West One. Maybe occasionally you can see a little smidgen of quality, the inkling that something could have been good if a bit more time was spent on it or whatever, but usually they're just awful beyond belief. But here's the thing with LJN. The company's reputation wasn't just bad from a gaming perspective. In the late 1980s, these guys became actual pariahs. Why? Entertech water guns, which differed from your super soakers and the like because they used black plastics with a matte finish, making them very realistic looking. <laughs> cool, huh? Unsurprisingly, they were very successful. I mean, don't you remember the time when toy guns actually looked like guns? <laughs> well, Entertech is one of the reasons why that's a bad idea. Because it's not exactly good for a toy company when your guns are either used in wobblies or responsible for children dying when pointed at a police officer. And when these things started happening on a regular basis, shit most certainly hit the fan. The guns were hammered in the press, banned in some places, but they were still sold in shops with, to be honest, negligible changes. The relationship between LJN and MCA soured as the latter's stock went through the floor because of it, which eventually led to MCA selling LJN off to a claim in 1990. Now, here's the thing. Do you honestly think that a company who doesn't seem to care all that much about their toy guns being a part of robberies and shootings is really going to care much about the quality of the video games they produce? I think not. Anyway, one of the first things Acclaim did with LJN was also one of the most sensible. They eliminated the toy division, which brings an end to the interesting part of the story. Acclaim basically acquired them so they could release more games for the NES through them, like Konami with Ultra Games. Remember, Nintendo at the time only let you release a few games a year. These walls were relaxed in the 16-bit era, although LJN still kept publishing games for Acclaim to distribute until 1995, when Acclaim folded the label. In all this time, LJN never actually made a game. It was all just publishing only. But the speed with which the games were turned out, and their supremely low quality, ended up shaping their house style, even if they used so many different developers. And this house style is best represented by 1989's Uncanny X-Men, which is… well, let's just look at it quickly. To be honest, I barely need to say anything. The computer's partner AI is perhaps the most hilarious of all the things. It's so easy for them to get stuck, and trying to unstick them is not only a pain, it can often result in your demise. The levels feel like Jackson Pollock designed them by chucking paint at a computer and seeing what would happen. The music is a cacophonic mess that strangles your ears, I mean, it's just horrifying. And in the end, there's nothing to the game that would make it worth playing for even a millionth of a second. You would see most of these problems appear in the vast majority of LJN games, but they all seem to be here at once, and then magnified. 
hilariously incompetent, and one of the worst games I have ever played. It does quite a good job of summing the whole company up. LJN were, in short, the made in Taiwan of the video gaming world. Right, with that done, we can at least look at a decent title, just to cleanse the palate at least. UN Squadron is a horizontal shooter by Capcom. To be honest, I never knew it was a licensed game at all, and technically this western version is not. However, the Japanese version was called Area 88, and is based off a series of manga comic books I know nothing about, and in all honesty will probably continue to know nothing about. That may annoy some people, but hey ho. I quite like the game, despite a few things. Firstly, I'm not a massive fan of horizontal shooters. I greatly prefer the vertical kind, especially when I'm going for something more old school. Secondly, I much prefer Mega Drive shooters because they're smoother and they don't tend to suffer from massive slowdown all the time. You don't get that with Blast Processing, darling. UN Squadron certainly does suffer from slowdown though, and it can be kind of jolting from time to time. Having said that, there is a lot happening, and it is a very good looking game, especially for an early SNES title. You get a very wide range of detailed ships to both fly with and fight against, and they'll be throwing lots of crap at you to boot. Cause yeah, the game is as tough as old boots. Admittedly, I can't get all that far in it, it kicks my ass severely any time I try. One other very good thing about it though, is that it does use a Bionic Commando-esque map system where you can choose from a variety of stages, meaning that even someone as rubbish as me can at least see a decent sized chunk of the game. So yes, I would say that UN Squadron is quite good. It's not my favourite SNES shooter, that would almost certainly be Space Megaforce, but it's still one that's worth playing. Thumbs up. Right, use in the books then. Now V doesn't feature all that many games either, but well there is a fairly epic computer RPG-ish game to look at, so you best get ready for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. And I'm sure there'll be some other stuff that may or may not be interesting to boot. We'll have to see. Until I do, thanks for watching and wherever you are, whoever you be, have a good one, take care, and I'll see you next time.